what is a vector what is a vector a vector is a directed line segment directed line segment vector is directed line segment to understand this let us draw a line segment a line segment we know that it has two end points it has two end points let us name them as o and a let us name them as o and a then supposing the initial position is o and the final position is a then the direction from initial to final is indicated with an arrow the direction from initial to final is indicated with an arrow the pointed end of this arrow the pointed end of this arrow represents the direction represents the direction vector is a mathematical figure a mathematical figure this is used this is used to represent any vector physical quantity any vector physical quantity so to understand the representation of a vector physical quantity let us go through an example let us take displacement and try to understand how the concept of vector how the concept of vector is used in representing displacement suppose h is the home of a student and s is the position of the school h is home and s is school then the straight line distance from h to s is known as the magnitude of the displacement of the school and the direction from h to s is the direction of displacement of the school if the boy goes from h to s his displacement is hs if the boy returns home from school then his displacement is sh sh the displacement sh indicates returning home and the displacement hs indicates going to the school now if the boy starts at home and reaches a place a which is a friend's house let us assume it is a friend's house then his position his displacement is ha he started at h and reached a hence his displacement is ha i am not concerned with the actual path he has traversed i am not concerned with the actual path he has traversed i am only i am only considering the initial and the final positions of this boy h and e i am interested only in his final position but not the path traversed by him so his displacement is h a thereafter along with his friend if he goes to school then his displacement is a s this is second part of the journey the first part is h a this is initial vector and the second vector a s is the displacement from friend's house to the school the total displacement is h s because he started at h and he finally reached s so his final position is at a distance equal to the length h s and the final position is s and the initial position is h so this is the displacement of the boy after reaching the school let us assume that the school is at a distance of 100 meters the school is at a distance of 100 meters from his home and his friend's house is at a distance of 80 meters and the distance of the school from his friend's house is say 60 meters from home to school is 100 meters from home to friend's house is 80 meters and from friend's house to the school it is 60 meters we can represent 
these displacements by taking a suitable scale. Let us assume that 1 centimeter length of the vector, 1 centimeter length of the vector represents 20 meters, 1 centimeter of the vector represents 20 meters, then 100 meters displacement is 5 centimeters, 80 meters displacement is 4 centimeters, 60 meters displacement is 3 centimeters. So, we get 3 vectors, one is of 5 centimeters length, another one is of 4 centimeters length and the third one is of 3 centimeters length. Now, using these 3 vectors, using these 3 vectors, we can draw the figure. Supposing initially he travels due east and thereafter he turns north. Initially he travels 80 meters due east, that is his friend's house is east of his house. Then the school is north of his friend's house. Then a vector of 4 centimeters length along a horizontal direction represents initial displacement. A vector of 3 centimeters length indicates the second phase of the displacement. Here I have taken the horizontal direction from left to right as west to east. The vertical direction from bottom to the top is taken as north. West to east is from left to right and bottom to the top is taken as south to north. Like this by choosing the directions on paper, we can represent the displacements with vectors, with vectors h a and a s. h a is 4 centimeters in length, a s is 3 centimeters in length. Now, join h s, join h s, then you will notice it to be 5 centimeters, you notice it to be 5 centimeters. We can prove this using Pythagoras theorem. We can prove this using Pythagoras theorem. The vector h to a indicates the boy has traveled from his home to the friend's house initially. The direction from a to s indicates the motion from friend's house to school. The direction from h to a indicates his home to the friend's house and the direction h to s indicates from his home to the school, the direction from his home to the school that is indicated by the arrow along h s. So, the pointed end of the arrow along h s should be towards s, the pointed end of the arrow along h a should be towards a, the pointed end of arrow along a s should be towards s. So, in the first phase h is starting position, initial position, a is final position. In the second phase, a is initial position and s is final position. For his overall journey, h is initial position and s is final position. Like this, we represent the displacements on paper using vectors. Using vectors, we represent, using vectors, we represent displacements on paper by choosing a suitable scale. Not only displacements, we can represent, we can represent any vector physical quantity, any vector physical quantity on paper using vectors, using vectors. If somebody asks you, what is the displacement of the school from your home? Then you will say it is 100 meters, 100 meters, but to enable to make him understand to make him understand the actual displacement we say that the displacement hs is 37 degrees north of east 37 degrees north of east supposing if the school is situated due north due north of the house of another boy then his initial displacement will be at an angle 53 degrees with north of east, north of east and the total displacement 
will be 90 degrees from east that is due north. Like this we can draw figures and explain how the journey took place, how the displacements are situated. So, vectors are useful, vectors are useful in representing the vector physical quantities, so that the others can understand, the others can understand the vector physical quantities completely. Another important point here we have to notice is that the displacements are 80 and 60, but 80 plus 60 is 140. The displacement from home to school is only 100 meters, it is not 140. So, we have to understand that by adding two vectors, the total will not be equal to the algebraic sum of the displacements. It is not equal to the algebraic sum of the displacements. So, we need a special addition for finding the resultant displacement. We need a special relation for finding the resultant displacement of two vectors. Here initial vector is h a, initial vector is h a and the second vector is a s. H is the tail of first vector, a is head of the first vector. In a s the second vector, a is tail and s is head. So, the tail of the second vector is made to coincide with the head of the first vector. The second vector is constructed at the head of the first vector and now the total displacement is given by the vector obtained by joining the tail of first vector, the tail of first vector and the head of the second vector, the head of second vector that is h and s. Tail of first vector is h and head of the second vector is s. Hence, the total displacement is h s like this we add vectors like this, this is known as vector addition. So, if you want to add a vector to another vector, say here I want to add a s to h a, hence the second vector is constructed at the head of first vector and the vector obtained by taking the tail of first vector and the head of second vector gives the displacement, the resultant vector, the resultant vector. To understand the angle between the two vectors, we represent them at the same position, we coincide their tails and then we measure the angle in the anti-clockwise direction, in the anti-clockwise direction. Hence, by constructing A s at h, we notice that h a and h s will be perpendicular. So, the angle between them is 90 degrees. The angle measured in the anti-clockwise direction is positive, the angle measured in the clockwise direction is negative. So, in this case the two vectors are perpendicular to one another, the two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So, we can use Pythagoras theorem, but when the angle is not 90 other than 90 say that some angle theta, then how do you find the resultant of two vectors. How do you find the resultant of two vectors? Now, let us proceed by taking two vectors at an angle theta. Let us take two vectors p and q r with an arrow over the letters capital letters. Instead of taking both initial and final positions, I am taking, I am representing the entire vector by p bar one vector by p bar and another vector by q bar. Now, let us suppose the angle between these two vectors is say theta, then how to understand this angle? Construct both the vectors with their tails coinciding, then measure the angle in the anti-clockwise direction, then you will get the angle between the two vectors. And let us suppose this angle is theta, the angle between these two vectors is say theta. By using parallelogram law, we derived the relations for the magnitude of the resultant and the direction of the resultant. If you take p and q as the magnitudes of these two vectors, 
p and q as magnitudes of these two vectors then if we suppose that the resultant is say r then r is equal to square root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta we can derive this relation using mathematics you find the derivation in any standard textbook using parallelogram law we derive this relation r is equal to square root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta here r is the resultant the magnitude of the resultant p is the magnitude of vector p and q is the magnitude of vector q and theta is the angle between the two vectors then while talking about the vectors we need the direction the direction of that vector the direction of this vector if it is making an angle alpha with p with the direction of p if the resultant is making an angle alpha then tan alpha is given by q sin theta by p plus q cos theta q sin theta by p plus q cos theta by determining r and alpha we locate this vector r 